Welcome to episode 244, Golden War and the Moore's Law, the master builder of Silicon Valley, 1929-2018. This is an outline of episode 244. There are three reasons why we study Gordon Moore. First, he's the author of the famous Moore's Law. Second, he co-founded two important companies, Fairchild and Intel. Third, he's one of the most important tech entrepreneurs in the world through his influence on the semiconductors. Let us meet Gordon Moore and his famous Moore's Law. And I'm continually amazed at where it seems to be going. Just remember, whatever has been done can be outdone. It's the 50th anniversary of Moore's Law. I wanted to share what this law means to consumer technology and to all of us at Intel. In 1965, when mainframe computers were just beginning to use integrated circuits, Gordon E. Moore published an article in Electronics Magazine in which he predicted a very bright future for the computing industry. By tracking the evolution of integrated circuits to date, Moore predicted that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit would continue to grow exponentially. This observation became known as Moore's Law. The message I was trying to get across was that integrated circuits were the road to less expensive electronics. It really evolved from being a measure of what goes on in the industry to something that more or less drives the industry. If you compare the first microprocessor, Intel's 4004, to today's 14 nanometer processor, performance is now 3,500 times higher. Energy efficiency is improved 90,000 times, and the price per transistor has fallen by over 60,000 times. If automotive technology had progressed at the same rate, cars would go almost 300,000 miles per hour, get over 2 million miles per gallon, and cost only 4 cents. No other technology that I can identify has made progress at that rate, nor has any had such a profound effect on the society throughout the world. And certainly in 1965, I would not have predicted the kind of products we make today. They're spectacular. Moore's law has driven Intel and the industry to make the impossible possible. Gordon Moore was born in 1929 in San Francisco. He's the first in his family to attend university. My first interest in chemistry was developing my neighbor who got a chemistry set, and I found some of the interesting things you could do with it. I decided right then I wanted to be a chemist, although I didn't quite know what one did. Gordon's love of chemistry carried him through his studies at Sequoia High School, San Jose State University. How he met Betty Irene Vitica at San Jose State University. They've actually had many moments together since they first met in college. Gordon and Betty were married in 1950. They raised two sons, Ken and Steve. Betty earned a degree in journalism and worked at the Ford Foundation, supporting Gordon while he earned a PhD in chemistry and physics. And right on through to the University of California at Berkeley where he earned a degree in chemistry. He then went on to obtain a doctorate in chemistry at Caltech. In 1956, he started as a protege to William Shockley, the English-born MIT and Caltech graduate who won the Nobel Prize in 1956 for physics. In 1956, Gordon accepted an invitation from Nobel laureate William Shockley to join his team researching semiconductors. That have made the semiconductor industry. Gordon was one of the first hires by William Shockley at Shockley Semiconductor, the first company established to create commercial transistors and the creator of the silicon transistor. He was one of the key people of Shockley's brain trust that he recruited. Well, when I got to Shockley lab, I didn't know anything about semiconductors, really. And, uh, of course, that was very early in the history of the industry. There wasn't an awful lot known when you come right down to it. Uh, I was a physical chemist by training. Uh, Shockley knew chemists, did some good things for him at Bell Labs, so thought he needed one out here. Uh, my job turned out to be to set up some of the diffusion technology and uh, do experiments to figure out how to make 
and the few silicon devices. The big rebellion in 1957 and the founding of Fairchild Semiconductor in the same year. He was one of the eight people who formed Fairchild Semiconductor, which is the first company to make a commercial integrated circuit. You'll see Gordon's picture in the upper left-hand section of the lower right-hand photograph uh, with the uh, traitorous eight that left Shockley Semiconductor to uh, create in a building that's now a... With Betty's support, Gordon moved far beyond explosives. His career included co-founding two legendary Silicon Valley companies. Whatever he called himself, Gordon impressed his colleagues. Seven of them joined him in 1957 to start Fairchild Semiconductor. Together, they brought the first integrated circuit to market. In 1968, Gordon and Bob Noyce co-founded Intel and soon produced the world's first microprocessor, considered one of the most important inventions of the 20th century. Robert Noyce and Gordon Moore would soon be joined by Andy Grove at Intel. Intel changed the world, inventing the microprocessor and becoming the world's largest microchip manufacturer. I've been extremely lucky uh, in my career. I got in the semiconductor business just at the right time, just as it was beginning to become commercially viable. During my career, I've seen uh, the industry move from the point where uh, we made single transistors to the point where we now make uh, memory chips with 250 million bits on them uh, and sell them for about the same price. Uh, the cost reductions have been phenomenal and that's what's really allowed electronics to enter everybody's lives and personal computers, PDAs, cell phones, and so forth. This phenomenal decrease in the cost of doing things electronically. He's often been in the company of world leaders and in 2002 was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 2000, Gordon Moore founded the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation with an endowment of $6.4 billion and an annual budget of over $300 million. The success of Intel generated great wealth, which Gordon and Betty have always shared generously. In September 2000, they founded the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, fueled a concern for environmental conservation. Actually, we used to go on fishing dates before we got married. This sounds really weird. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I always enjoyed trout fishing or fishing off the pier at Santa Cruz. I mean, being a Los Gatos girl just over the hill. It's been a wonderful thing, and all the fishes live in the most beautiful spots in the world. They do. Gordon and Betty have supported the preservation of many of those places, including their beloved San Mateo. What have I learned today? First, Gordon Moore co-founded two of the largest tech giants in Silicon Valley, Fairchild in 1957 and Intel in 1968. Second, he also created one of the largest foundations in Silicon Valley. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Gordon Moore, 10 Lessons. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.